I'm Antonia and Nora, and we're going to register to vote! <laughs> Hey, I'm Antonia. I'm the Outreach and Campaigns Coordinator for the 3 million and today we're going to learn how to register to vote as an EU citizen in the UK. Yay! Hi, I'm Nora and I'm from Finland and I'm an EU citizen in the UK. And I'm here because I study drama and film in Queen's University Belfast and... Uh, what are we going to do today? We're going to register to vote. Yay! And why is it important to register to vote? Because because you can, so why would you not want to participate? I and mean, if you like, you live here, so you want to like make sure people hear your voice as well. So yay! Hey, hi. We're gonna register to vote. Yes, exciting. It's exciting. It's so exciting. Okay. So the first thing you do is you go to the Our Home Our Vote page. Um, it's Our Home Our Vote UK. Super easy to remember. And then once you're there, what do we do? We press the register to vote button. And what I'll do, it'll take you to the government website where you can mm -hmm. officially register online. So what we do is we scroll down and press the big green button that says start now. So next, where do you live? Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland. You click the button. Ba -da -ba -da. Nationality. I am a citizen of a different country. And where are you from? I'm from Finland. Ooh, Finland. Ooh. Tell Wait. us a fun fact about Finland. Uh, Finland is 103 years old. Wow, it's an old country. Oh, really? Do you think about it? I guess when you think about it in terms of EU. Yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> okay, so what is your nationality? EU, finish. We write it down and then we press continue. continue. Okay, <laughs> then you put in your date of birth. Yes. Okay, so you put in your full name and your details. Um, have you ever changed your name? No. No? So, what is your national insurance number? I don't actually know. That's okay, you can still register to vote. Interesting. So what do we do? We press, I don't know, my national insurance number. And then you click, I can't provide my national insurance number if you don't have one. And then you just give a reason why you can't provide it. And it's as simple as writing, I haven't had one before. And then you just type in, I haven't had one. Yeah, I haven't had one. All good. Easy. So you can provide your email address and they can contact you just to verify that you haven't had a national insurance number before. But it's all completely verifiable and easy to do. You don't actually have to put your email address if you want to, but it'll just be easier for them to follow up with you if you do. So we press next, we press continue. What is your address? So just put in your postcode of whatever UK address that you're currently based at. And then it'll come up with um, a certain list of addresses and you just select which one that you live at. And press continue. Has your address last changed since you last registered? If you haven't registered before, you press no. No. First time. First time, first time registering. Okay, do you live at a second address in the UK? No, I don't. No. Um, that's completely up to you. Usually sometimes if a student is based in the UK and perhaps they're a student as well in a different university in the UK, they might have two addresses. You can register for up to two addresses if you are a student, for example. Um, if you're not, then you just press no and click whatever um, address you are currently based at. Perfect. Do you want to include your name and address on the edited register? So basically what this means is um, there's an open register where you have your name and your address and people can use it for um, advertising if they want to, so some people opt out of it, um, but people can also use it for like credit roll and stuff, so it's completely up to you. It's optional whether or not you want your name on the register. Um, it will still be on the register, but it might not be available to the public if you opt out of it, so it's completely up to you whether or not you want your name and address to be listed. If you opt out of the open register, it doesn't impact your right to vote. You'll still be registered to vote. That's good. All good. Do you have an identity document to take to the polling station? All you need is a passport, um, a driving license, or any other form of ID that you can show that you are um, based in the UK and you are um, identifiable as a person. <laughs> Yay! Very, very easy. So there's a list of things here that you can use um, as identification. Do you wish to apply for a post or proxy vote? What a proxy vote is, it basically means that someone goes out and votes for you. So for example, if you are shielding from coronavirus or if you don't want to go out and you don't want to risk um, voting in person, you can still apply for either a postal vote, which means you vote by mail, by post, or you can apply by proxy, which means you say that someone else will go for you. Um, or you can vote in person if you want to as well. So it's completely up to you. Um, you must have a valid reason if you want to apply for a post or proxy, but COVID is a valid reason. So um, you can do that if you want to. So it's completely up to you. Or you can vote in person. Um, so, um, so what would you like to do? I think I'll vote in person. Ooh, exciting. Okay, if we have questions about your registration, can we contact you by phone? Um, so that's up to you. You can either put in your email address or you can put in your phone number. Um, and basically that's just to confirm things like the fact that you don't have a national insurance number um, or if they have any questions about your voting. Um, they don't normally, but it's good just to be safe for, for verification purposes. 
it's really important to put some sort of contact information just so they make sure that you are fully registered and verified. So either put in your email or your phone or whatever you're more comfortable with, um, because that means if they need to contact you, they can contact you and they can verify that you are an actual person um, and verify your registration to vote. So it's really important that you put something just in case. So for example, you might be contacted to confirm your address or to confirm any supporting information, um, such as the fact that you might not have a national insurance number. Okay. And then the last thing to do, so exciting, we're so close, is you check your answers before sending in your application. So you just read everything over. There's an, a summary page at the very end that will tell you everything that you put in and you'll be able to look it over and just make sure that everything is correct. Um, and then we'll be able to send in your application and submit and you'll be registered to vote. <laughs> if everything is correct, then all you have to do is press a button and say that you are acknowledging that you are over 18, you're in the UK and you want to register to vote. The registration deadline is on midnight on the 19th of April. So get registered. Exciting. Okay, that's it. Oh, Yay! Big green thing came up. Your application has been received and processed, so you'll know that you have completed the registration process if you get this big green box. Big green box. Um, that's good. And that means um, they will send you a confirmation email of your registration, local elections on May 6th um, in your area. That's interesting. Exciting! Can't wait. We did it! We're registered to vote! Yay! And that's it. Super that's easy, super quick. That took us like five minutes, right? Yeah, go and do it right now. Go do it. Go register to vote. It'll be fun and it'll be great. And you'll make a difference. Yes, make a difference in your local community. It's super easy to do. Our home, our vote! vote.